How pale the sapphire of the central night, wherein the stars turn grey. Clark Ashton Smith I sat within a moonlit glade on a summer's night. The air was very still, and the starlight over Sesqua Valley seemed sad and pale. I was staring into that melancholy light when, from out of woodland shadow, a figure limped toward me. I took in his lean, dishevelled form, the shock of unruly hair, the emaciated face. How odd that the moon's glow played strangely on one of his eyes. He knelt in front of me and bent his mouth to mine. The taste of his kiss was familiar. I pulled him to the ground and made love to his throat, his mouth, his chilly cheek. Lifting my head, I looked more closely at the pale dead eye that had replaced his socket's living orb. What's this? It's something I had fashioned in Prague. Oh, Adam, I have found the lair of the forgotten god. I discovered the place where innocence was slaughtered in his name. I found the place where uncanny gems were offered to his mystery. I took one such gem and had it shaped so as to replace the eye that I have sacrificed in his name. There it is, snug in my socket, the jewel that he loved to look at, the surface of which caught his reflection in flickering torchlight. His shadow became a living stain that adhered to the gemstone I had purloined. Look closely at that ornament, my love, and see the wonder that it adds unto me. Gaze deeply into its surface, Adam, and you will see him. I touched the stiff and chilly flesh that was nearest to the artificial eye. I leaned nearer to that flesh and kissed it with my hot mouth. My lips touched the jewel's smooth surface. When I lifted my head and gazed steadfastly at that pale orb, I saw within it a swirling shadow that slowly took on form. I saw the visage that pierced that shadow with its majesty that broke through and gazed at me with inhuman eyes. My lover raised his mouth to my ear and whispered one unholy name. That night, in bed, he spoke of forgotten deities, gods formed in chaos beyond the known dimensions, things that pulsed in alien spaces between the stars. I listened, enthralled. We had spoken often of such things. I had shown him books and sculptures, bar reliefs and tiaras on which were depicted the likenesses of unimaginable things. He wore himself out with talking that night. The pain in his injured leg began to throb. I held him in my arms and sang him to sleep. His head pressed against my chest, and the texture of the flesh near to the demonic eye chilled me to my heart. That cold sensation slowed the pounding of my organ and seemed to seep into my veins where it flowed toward my brain, and blessed me with unholy vision. I squatted within a vaulted chamber. Strewn before me were the dry bones of offerings devoured long ago. In lethargy I sat and dreamed, recalling a time when I had known the succulent taste of sacrifice. Near to me was the dry husk of one long dead offering, its skeletal hand stretched toward me. Within the palm of bone were pale gems that had been offered in obsequious veneration. I discerned upon their smooth surface my hoary reflection. I gazed for an eternity at the semblance of a forgotten god. And when at last I shut my weary eyes, I dreamt of sacrifice, of cindery human substance. And when I awakened, it was to the scent of living flesh, which I but vaguely recalled. I gazed at the empty palm of bone from which my gems had been pilfered. Sniffing air, I found a fragrance of mortal flesh and tangy blood. It brought to my senses a memory of sacrificial slaughter. And then the scene melted and became dark. I lay within a shadowed chamber with my lover in my arms, his throat pressed against my mouth. I sucked at his salty flesh and bit into it. He moaned softly as I moved my tongue into the new wound. Outdoors, the night was haunted by the undulate song of numberless toads. He awakened me before dawn and took my hand. Naked, we walked into woodland, to a ring of sacrificial stones. 
Legend told that the poet and sculptor, William Davis Manley, had chiseled the large rocks into the likenesses of things seen in disturbed dreaming, faces that called for blood and death. I had brought my lover to this place when first I lured him to Sesqua Valley and taught him our ways. He had been a dreamy boy, lonely and forsaken by those he loved and on whom he had depended. I nurtured his wounded psyche and taught him of the old ones who would not desert him. He did not disappoint me. Alone he journeyed to the places outside the valley where he could find the arcane things. Now he had returned to share with me the law that had educated him. Together we knelt within the ring of stones, and he whispered to me the unwholesome name. Sathogua. I can see him, waiting patiently for when the stars come right and he will grow strong and liberated. Ah, how he hungers for cosmic freedom, to seep towards starlight and find his home. But he is weak. Only sacrifice will make him strong. Let us assist him. Adam, look, this discarded stone here, it's heavy and will do the trick. Hold it high above my head as I lay down my life for the thing that begs for veneration. Let us offer him a new sacrifice, my love. I took the heavy stone from his hands as he reclined upon the ground. His smile was a beautiful thing. I took in his handsome face and then smashed that beloved visage with the weighty rock. Sighing, I took from the remains of his pulp the filthy gem that had usurped a living eye. I gazed hard at the shadow within its pale surface, and saw the bestial face that smiled. <laughs>